Hey everyone, my name is Root and we are back. This is going to be week four of the PGLNU Cup and we took a pretty hard loss last week, but uh, we are back up against Trexo once again. We did play him in the PGL proper and we're going to get a chance to play him in this NU Cup and I think our team matches up really, really well. Uh, he does definitely have a scary team, but like I said, I do think that we do have the matchup. Some things that I'm definitely scared of that mini are, um, that Drift Bloom is going to be huge because this is going to actually be my first match using Pyroar and Pyroar along with Malamar is going to definitely mean that Drift Blim just gets so much more valuable and I know he's going to play with it really really well it's going to play around a lot of my big threats however my offensive typings in this matchup are going to be pretty spammable that's why actually I have two scarfed mons and a choice specs mon because I do think that I can open the door a little bit maybe perhaps with rocks and just early damage and then that'll open up the door a lot later on but we don't see the drift bloom at all I'm gonna write down his team slow bro Venusaur and no uh, uh, electivire magmortar core which I know he really enjoys using and it's really cre pretty crazy not to see it here we do see the mini arm Sock and Drudagon. And last mon is the Venusaur here. Okay, that's a very interesting team. Um, it doesn't actually stop my Cryogonal from just kind of spamming um, choice specs freeze dry. And actually, I forgot one member of my team here. What did I forget? Did I forget King? No, Kingler's there. Doug Trio, that's the one that I did not write down. Doug Trio. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So Doug Trio has a decent enough matchup. It can spam Iron Head. This is a Bandit Doug Trio. So I have a Bandit Doug Trio, Specs Cryogonal, and then Scarfed a uh, Kingler and Malamar. And uh, the Pyroar can kind of do work here a little bit. And uh, the Gigalith can is just for early on kind of helping out. Actually, doesn't have any type of defog. So I don't know. I definitely don't mind just leading off with my Gigalith. I have to be honest, I'm probably only leading off with Gigalith. I generally hate Rocks leads, but I'm probably only doing this because uh, I noticed that the timer was, was running out and uh, I had to get a lead out there. I don't know. What what, what should I have led with? I probably, mm, maybe Duck Trio. Uh, Duck Trio could be early later on though, or could be important later on. Um, also, yeah, the Gigalith is kind of meant as a kind of direct uh direct counter to that mini or and also i do have the uh the pyroar with roar on it in case uh the mini or tries to come in and just set up in pyroar's face thinking that it can handle either of its stabs uh we do you know what i'm just gonna toxic turn one I'm just going to go ahead and talk to turn one. Uh, getting that extra turn of damage is going to be huge. And I'm not too, too worried about this thing trying to come in and set up um, and uh, hit me with an earthquake in a few seconds. I would rather do that and have this poison damage and that sandstorm damage rack up a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he hits me back with his own. I almost misclicked there. No, I clicked Stealth Rocks. I'm pretty positive. Um, goes for the glare. I'm not too, too concerned about that. Maybe he expected me to switch out, but I really don't have any reason to yet. I just want to get these rocks off. Yeah, there we go. Now, in all honesty, what I kind of want to do is protect. Well, I don't know. I either want to protect or want to stone edge. I don't really have any idea yet as to what I'm going to be able to do. No, I should. I really, really should keep this as, like I said, one of my mini or counters. It is uh, very defensive. Obviously, it's Gigalith, but, um... I should leave it around for that reason alone. I don't know, what would he bring in if I just brought in uh, my... Well, it could Earthquake right now. So it kind of makes me want to protect just to take advantage of that extra turn of Toxic. And Sandstorm. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll basically review my set. So I noticed that offensively. Oh, it just switches out. What are we going into the? No, okay, the sock. I noticed that defensively, uh, the only offensive move that I really needed was Stone Edge, like in general. So I didn't uh, mind just having the Stone Edge here. Except now this sock comes in. 
right? I might have to sack something here. This thing could be huge, but it could try to bulk up in my face. This thing could try to bulk up in my face. And I really need to keep this Gigalith healthy. My most offensive mon is the... Kingler. But, I don't know. Kingler doesn't have a great matchup in this situation, does he? Kingler can take on the Scarfed Minior a little bit. But other than that... It's really not doing a whole lot. Yeah. I might just go into Kingler here. I mean, the Kingler, I thought, did really well. The Scarf Kingler, in particular, did really well against the Electivire Magmortar Core. But, uh, don't see them here. And just go straight in for the close combat. Makes me kind of think... Um... What's the word? Uh, kind of makes me think... Scarfed, maybe banded. That actually could be banded damage. Let me let me give Sock a peep right now, because that was a whole lot of damage. Well, either way, no. Whether banded or not, he, he's probably going to want to bring in... Well, no, he thinks he would outspeed in this situation, actually. So let me see. Close combat. Close combat. He definitely would think he outspeeds. Oh, that has to be banded damage. That's adamant band, I think. Yeah, that almost has to be Adamant Choice Band. Oh, wait, I'm looking at the wrong Pokemon. Whoops. Whoops. It still looks like Bandit Damage, actually. No, it can't be. Bandit would have taken me out no matter what. So is it just Adamant? Did I miss Life Orb or something? Yeah, okay. That actually does make sense. Okay. So this thing could still be Scarfed. I'm gonna Liquidation here. Goes for the Withdrawal. Sends back out the Drapion, so probably... Probably... Oh, Rough Skin here. That does... Uh, enough. Rough Skin does take me out. Uh, now sand does end, but I don't think I'll be able to okay So so I will be able to potentially get my Get my gigalith back in but I probably don't want to do that. Like I said, I kind of just want to get in my Doug trio Right Doug trio could feasibly just start Going in right now Now that I have the free switch in He's gonna let this thing go down, right? That should pretty much be a given. But... Here's the thing, cuz... He could go into slow- well, I don't know, would you go into slow bro? That slow bro mini or, uh, core really works for him in this situation. But, regardless... I think the play is just an iron head. He might not immediately want to go into the slow bro. Goes into Cosmos. Ooh. That's interesting. So Shields Down is going to activate. But we're going to do a lot. This is a banded. This is a gosh dang banded Iron Head going on. That is a straight Oko after Stealth Rocks. I didn't actually do those counts, but I mean, let's do them right now. Minior. That is a huge, huge burden off of my. Uh, Shoulders. Oh, he probably thought that that Drudgon would have been the the deterrent for me wanting to do that, but not any chance was that my my deterrent. So let me see. Oh, I have to go into Minior, Minior Meteor form. However, now Earthquake is incredibly, incredibly free, and this Bandit Duck Trio has the opportunity to clean up later on in the match. And. I do, I do just want to see that Alolan Doug Trio. Oh, Ironhead was always an Oko. Well, banded. But even without band, even without band, Ironhead does a whole lot of work. Okay. But yeah, this is definitely where we switch out here. 
And now I can start playing around with my Gigalith a little bit more. I can start playing around with my Gigalith a little bit more. Malamar is almost in position as well. Huh. Yeah, I'll just bring in that Gigalith. Should I? I probably shouldn't do that. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to go into Gigalith. I don't think... See, I do want to have those defensive options for later on in the match, that defensive switch in from Gigalith, but I just don't see it as that valuable to me anymore, especially um, it did so much work against the Dortagon. It's going to wear this thing down with Sandstream and potentially... Um, goes for the Skull, that's fine. And potentially... Um, that Dragon as well. We do not get burned. But yeah, just that residual damage. I mean, it's just going to be huge throughout this match. You could even bring in the v Venusaur. I really don't care. Actually, would bring in the Venusaur on my Toxic. I kind of want a Stone Edge expecting the Dragon to come in, and I don't want it to get like the freest of... Because if I do let it get that free Earthquake on me, then that Slowbro can come back in and... And, uh... That Slowbro can come back in and just Scald me after, you know, getting up all its health back from Regenerator. So I expect the Dredagon to come in. Yeah, the Dredagon does come in, but we should be well in range to take it out to a Stone Edge. If we can land the Stone Edge, we do land the Stone Edge. We we didn't get baited by that Toxic play. Um. Okay, things are looking okay. Things are looking okay. What would be his switch in here? Probably Sock. He probably wants to take me out with Sock. Maybe not. I don't know. Could be risky. Sock. Okay. Totally, totally fair. Totally, totally fair. I, I haven't been writing down any KOs. I've been writing down any KOs. I am so afraid of a, of a Scarf Sock here. I'm really afraid of a Scarf Sock. And I also could just Toxic here. Keeping my other members healthy is pretty important. Um, my Pyroar is pretty wide open. My Pyroar is, is pretty wide open now. Yeah, I brought this in, like, basically as a sack. I think... I think just getting a Toxic off. Um, especially to try to set up that Pyroar. Now, does this take me out? If this takes me out, then it's probably Banded. It does, okay. So I guess we still don't have Bandit technology, but however, that close, those close combat drops is going to be doing enough. It's going to help me out enough. I could also bring in the... I could also bring in the... Malamar here. Let me see. Yeah, this is where we definitely have to do some aggressive calcing. Because this switch is going to be... Is going to pretty much open the game wide open if I can get this correct. So we know it's pretty much max HP. Right? Could I. What's the better play? I could uh, take advantage of the Sand Force with Duck Trio. Um. I could bring in the Malamar. Malamar is a two hit KO with the superpower. Malamar's a 2 KO with the superpower, but it just invites in the slow, bro. That's not the best play. I think Duck Trio might be the best play in this situation. And that would confirm Scarf, I guess, even though mm, that's that's hugely pro problematic. Hyper Voice is a guaranteed Oka. Well, assuming no investment, but I'm going to assume no investment. Yeah, I think just taking advantage of the Sand Force for now and how free Earthquake is right now, I think that's absolutely the best play. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't even include Sand Force into this uh, calc, but once I put in Sand Force, let me see, Alone the Trio, and then give it Sand. Yeah, those calcs become insane. So yeah, there's no reason not to Earthquake in this situation. 
Doug Trio has a chance to take out his team. We would have to take a hit from the Venusaur. Possible Hidden Power Fire, I suppose. Possible Earthquake, too. Um, if we're able to take a hit from that Venusaur, then we should be in decent shape. But uh, that Minior going down, that, that call on that Minior can open, the, open up this game here. Also, let's take a look at this calc against Slowbro. We are in sand, which is going to be huge, but uh, let's just look at a Slowbro. Oh, man. Oh, man. Earthquake does so much. Earthquake just does so much damage. Earthquake actually... Threatens Anoko without HP investment. It's, it's gonna be HP invested, like, whatever, that's fine. I believe that is the Venusaur. And I don't think he can avoid this as a 2-8 KO with sand. Let me, let me just see for myself. Venusaur. Oof. That is quite nearly an Oko, and actually Gigalith is gonna get that KO because of that sandstorm. But, uh... But yeah, under that sand force... Actually, that, that actually had to be a very defensive Venusaur. But with the Sand Force, that uh, didn't have a chance. I guess that was a sack. I guess it was a sack. Um, and now it does make Pyroar a little bit less uh, crucial, I guess. But this thing comes in. Would I be willing to give up this Alone the Dug Trio for all this damage right now? I have to open up Slowbro again. I just overrode it for the, uh... This is so much potential damage. So much potential damage. I mean, this actually Oko's if there's no HP investment, but of course it's going to be super defensive. How many turns of sand? Is this the last turn of sand? Yeah, this is the last turn of sand. So, okay, if if I give him a Lowland Doug Trio, what are my answers for the rest of his team? Actually, the Pinsir resists, so that's not real so that's not ever really a switch in either. Um or not an answer to the Pinsir. But let me see this Pinsir. Let me see this Pinsir. Yeah, we're not doing a whole heck of a lot of damage to this Pinsir anyway, so I guess we do just take this damage here. I'm fine with it. This, Like I said, this is the last turn of sand. We're going to get taken out by a Scald anyway. So that is so much damage. But yeah, that is right around in line with a max HP Slowbro. But let's also just peep uh, any possible defense investment here. Um, That actually might just be max HP, max special defense. Would that be right? All right, now here's where can, we can get really crazy. What about a Malamar? What about a Malamar? Would a Malamar superpower be able to take this thing out potentially? Ooh, no, just out of range too. Just out of range. So, unfortunately, that's not a play. However, our play might just might just be Specs Cryogonal. Because um, if he has if he has a scarfer, he would have to reveal it. Actually, scarf sock actually still wins in this game, which is crazy to think about. That is crazy to think about. But yeah, the play should be just scarf freeze right here. And now I guess we just have to see these calcs, cryogonal. I think the pincer is more likely to be scarfed. Let's just click freeze dry. Let's just click freeze dry. It's going to give this thing up, right? That just makes me think that whatever he has in the in the back could take me out. I could have messed up. 
pretty badly. I could have messed up pretty badly. But if that's if that's the case, if he just has something really, really strong in the back, then I don't think I messed up in this game. I think I messed up um, in team building, which I guess is no better, really. But uh, what are we doing to this pincer? OK, it's not scarfed. We get this freeze dry off. It does live. Salic berry? Salic berry. Ooh, okay. That's wild. That's kind of wild. Okay. I think I might lose. I think I might lose with a salic berry. Is there any way that I can avoid losing? Actually, no, I, I can't avoid losing. I would have to bring this. I'd have to bring this thing back in to Ice Shard. Ice Shard does 9 to 11%. Yeah. I think I have to give up Pyroar in this situation. I think I have to give up Pyroar in this situation to bring this thing back in, and then I can 1v1 the Sock with Malamar. Unfortunately, this is Pyroar's uh, this is Pyroar's time, and I have to I have to do this. Unfortunately, but at this point, I'd be pretty surprised if the Sock if the Sock isn't scarfed. Unfortunately, but there's the close combat. And now, especially, I could bring in the Cryogonal to Ice Shard. There's the Moxie. Okay. There's no reason for him to switch out because the rocks would take him out unless he's just completely pro playing me and he knows. Well, no, it wouldn't matter either way. But, I don't know. The... Well, no, there'd be no reason to, because then his song could be forced to close combat, which would drop his defenses. But, um, we do get that out there, and now the sock would have to come in, even if it is scarfed. And I'm not gonna know, unfortunately. Even if, if the sock is scarfed, then I'm gonna get that chip damage with Ice Shard, and he's gonna have to drop his defenses to close combat me. So... Whatever, so I'm going to be able to actually Psycho Cut with, with Malamar now, and Malamar could win me this game. Malamar could win me this game. Fire Punch. Okay, avoiding the close combat drops, but that's not going to be enough to take out my Malamar anymore. And now I can freely, like, superpower, I think, because especially with that chip damage up against a Sock... Yeah, I think that was genuinely the only way that I won, and I think that's how we just win. And I guess now we finally see if the sock is scarfed, because um, I myself am scarfed, so uh, this is where we find out. And this could be another moment where my Malamar wins this game for me, getting the final KO. Possibly. Uh, does Psycho Cut have a chance to miss? I feel like it does. Because if it does, then I wouldn't mind just double superpowering. Even though that could be a choke. I don't know. I, I would have to make sure that that's not a choke first. But doesn't Psycho Cut have a chance to miss? Am I crazy? 100% accurate. Okay, okay. Fair enough. So, I believe this thing is scarfed. But here's the moment of truth. Is this thing scarfed? It's not scarfed. Okay. Well, that changes a whole bunch. However, we did play around the scarf that was never there. I'm going to have to ask him after this match, whatever that item was. That was a fantastic match. That was an incredible, incredible match. Oh, that was a whole, whole lot of fun. 
But uh, with that, that's going to be Trexus again. We, Like I said, we did battle him in real life. I met him at PAX and we battled literally five feet from each other. And he's been really gracious to invite me back over to this NU Cup. I'm having a ridiculous amount of fun with this team. Hopefully we can continue to win with it as well. But that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back again with more PGL NU Cup. And really, really soon we're going to have a PGBL draft. We are going to have an entire new set of battles. We have a really, really exciting cast to be able to reveal to you guys i honestly couldn't be more excited about this season i'm just so ready to battle for this new pgbl season three but with that once again thank you guys so much for watching and i'll be once again out